Hmm, black holes. How much I love talking about them. If you've been on this channel long enough, you know that uh, once in a while I talk about black holes or discoveries related to black holes or basically just show you black holes. As a matter of fact, the most popular video on the channel is about a black hole. But today we're going to be talking about uh, potentially groundbreaking research or at least mathematical theoretical research that may actually help us explain these things once and for all. Now, let's start small. So first of all, this is actually a very small team. There's only three researchers in this particular paper, all three hailing from Penn State University. And uh, their names are, uh, I'm going to totally butcher the names. And I'm so sorry if, if you're watching this, but it's Abhay Ashtekar, Javier Almero, and uh, Parampit Singh. The two papers that they published essentially help us to finally mathematically understand what might be happening inside the black holes and um, help us also answer the unanswered questions of information paradox, the missing white holes, and most importantly, what uh, is inside the black holes and also help us understand what's actually happening to all of the matter and all of the energy that has fallen and will fall into these black holes over time. So let's start with the idea that was formulated by Einstein over a hundred years ago. This is actually coming from the famous um, Einstein's field equation and uh, back then he actually formulated it and he also predicted the existence of these theoretical objects known as black holes. Um, back then nobody really thought they were real, as a matter of fact we didn't really realize that they could be even a thing until way way later on. Um, and uh, over the past few decades, obviously, we've discovered quite a lot of different black holes. Like, for example, this one right here is one of the most well studied. This is um, Cygnus X1 black hole, a stellar sized black hole that's um, a few thousand light years away from us. We've also discovered supermassive black holes, and we've even discovered the collision between different black holes and were able to detect their gravitational waves. But if you go back to Einstein's equation, You'll see that he didn't just predict the black holes, he also predicted white holes. As a matter of fact, uh, his equation clearly states that the existence of a black hole suggests an existence of a white hole with its own singularity and its own, I guess you could call it, um, white horizon, the opposite of event horizon that the black hole has. And so, in that sense, for a very long time, we've been actually trying to find white holes, and um, back in 2006, We've actually observed a very, very, very large amount of gamma rays coming off a supernova that may have potentially been um, a white hole. For about 102 seconds, there were gamma rays that didn't really make sense. And so some scientists implied that this was a white hole finally discovered. But except for this particular event, we have never really observed or seen any um, instances of what seems to uh, resemble a white hole. So in that sense, for the longest time, actually up until today, white holes were very theoretical and they kind of still are really. Most scientists today think that white holes uh, don't really exist in real life. Although theoretically, they do seem to exist, at least in Einstein's theory. Now, um, okay, so that's one problem. We haven't really seen any white holes. The second problem is what really happens on the inside of a black hole and also um, at the actual edge of the event horizon. And when it comes to the event horizon of a black hole, the so-called information paradox has still not really been resolved. This paradox refers to the idea of matter falling into the black hole and maintaining its actual um, information. So if a matter just gets sucked into the black hole and disappears, it doesn't really make sense because that's not really how the universe works. It's supposed to um, actually maintain this information, like for example, its charge, its mass, um, its other components, uh, and we should be able to understand what happens to this information. But if a black hole just swallows it, it sort of um, contradicts a lot of mathematical concepts. On the other hand, when you go inside of a black hole, so let's try to actually go inside here, uh, when you enter the event horizon and when you actually try to essentially fly through the event horizon, inside, deep inside, uh, there's something called singularity. Now, this particular singularity that you can kind of see right there um, also doesn't really make sense because it basically means that it's infinite density, it's infinitely small, and there's a lot of infinity designs that, even though they exist mathematically, don't exist in real life. There's nothing infinite in real life. As a matter of fact, one of the most famous examples of showing how infinity is only a mathematical concept, not a real life concept, is coming right here from the famous Newton's um, equation for 
basically the gravitational forces between two bodies. This equation here shows us how much force is created by two bodies of two different masses and how much force they actually create between each other. And the less distance there is between them, the more gravitational force is created. Now at some point, what if you make this R zero? Basically, what if you literally put these two bodies at a zero distance? Does that mean that they suddenly start creating infinite amount of energy? Now we know that's not true, that doesn't really happen. And so this is when new formulas have to be used, new mathematics have to be developed, and basically you have to rely on, uh, like for example, Einstein's theory of uh, relativity. So this no longer works. But when it comes to black holes, Einstein's relativity also doesn't really work anymore once you cross the event horizon, because things just kind of turn into infinity. And this is why uh, these three scientists that I previously mentioned, uh, whose names I'm not going to try to butcher again, but you can read their paper in the description below, essentially came up with um, a new idea that has really been developed for a long time now. And although they're not the first to propose this idea, they were the first to uh, quite accurately describe what might be happening. So this is called loop quantum gravity. It's essentially a theory of gravity that uses quantum mechanics and goes into what happens with gravity at super, super, super tiny scales. In other words, it tries to combine Einstein's ideas with quantum mechanics and quantum ideas. And um, in some sense, it does a pretty good job at explaining what actually happens once you cross the event horizon. And so in their paper, they apply these um, ideas from quantum gravity and explain that when you cross the black hole's event horizon, you actually go into the future. You literally pass through um, geometry of space-time that then exits in the future where the black hole has become a white hole. Now this idea does seem like something we may have actually heard before and may have even been uh, speculated previously, but what makes this particular research really interesting is that um, they actually use very good mathematics to explain how, well, essentially here's a picture that sort of summarizes their findings and it's very similar to the one I just showed you previously. You have matter entering the black hole and because of all of the space-time warping that happens around the event horizon of a black hole, a lot of things basically kind of slow down in time and almost freeze in time. So they're saying that everything that falls into the black hole literally freezes in time here and moves really, 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 really slow. And as those things go into the black hole and essentially reach the so-called singularity and cross the singularity, they have what's known as a quantum transition where things suddenly flip and the black hole has now become a white hole, which happens in the future. And this white hole now expands all of the matter at a tremendously high speed and with tremendously high energy and essentially just spews everything out, releasing all of the matter is collected and literally turning into a white hole. So in essence, um, what they're saying is that all of the black holes will actually become white holes in the future. And the idea here is that a black hole is a time-reversed white hole and a white hole is a time-reversed black hole. And even though it sounds kind of brilliant, they were able to actually demonstrate this mathematically. And now we actually need more people to look into this research to actually either confirm it or to better even find actual uh, examples out there in space where we can maybe look at something and, and say that, okay, this is it, we've we just found it. And um, honestly, it's such a simple yet such a brilliant solution, right? You have a black hole where things come in and you have a white hole when things come out. And at the same time, it also mentions the idea of a wormhole that's right here and is also mentioned by Einstein while creating this really cool black hole white hole duality um, with, I guess, an idea of uh, time travel. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that a spacecraft can just go into the black hole and come out in the future uh, from the white hole. Because once again, as you approach the black hole, things will kind of not go well for you. You're still going to get shredded apart by extremely high tidal forces from the actual black hole and from the gravity inside the black hole. But nevertheless, it does actually help us explain a lot of problems we've had with black holes before. Like I said, one of the biggest problems was the so-called information paradox. And this explanation simply means that all of the information and all of the matter that fell into the black hole didn't really fall into it, it literally just slowed down in time and then it's going to bounce off it and escape when the black hole becomes a white hole. It also implies that pretty much every black hole is going to become a white hole at some point, 
Which of course means we need to start looking around for maybe signs of these white holes. If black holes are currently transitioning and becoming white holes, then maybe just maybe we're going to actually physically prove this uh, hypothesis as well. This also implies that none of the matter that actually falls into the black hole disappears. It just means that it bounces off in the future. It also implies that uh, at some point, uh, there's actually a period when a black hole transitions to the white hole and becomes a very unusual object known as a Planck star. Basically, at this really, really uh, tiny microscopic level, the black hole white hole transition uh, becomes this strange and um, very hard to describe singularity object that doesn't have a property of a black hole or a white hole. It's a transitional state. And for all we know, some of the things that we, we actually have observed in the past and could not explain might be these things right here. They might be actually black hole to white hole transitions. Like for example, the um, gamma ray bursts that have been uh, actually detected several times now are still unexplained. And if we can connect the black hole to white hole transition to gamma ray bursts, this is basically like solving two problems in one. We've also uh, been observing very strange cosmic uh, ray radiation that has been coming from unusual locations, but um, was very, very, very high in energy that is still unexplained as well. So maybe that's also a sign of a black hole to white hole transition. And finally, uh, one of the bigger mysteries today is still actually FRB, fast radio bursts. Nobody knows what created them, nobody knows where they're coming from, and nobody really knows uh, what could be responsible for such a highly energetic event. And maybe somebody will actually do the math and find out that well, it turns out that if a black hole transitions to white hole, it does create an FRB, then we've just solved two problems at once. And so, in some sense, this particular paper, or these two papers by these three uh, scientists, may resolve a lot of problems if they're actually correct. In some sense, this is actually something that's brilliant and at the same time very intriguing. If they actually are correct in their assumption, that means that not only is this going to be a Nobel Prize, uh, it's probably going to be one of the bigger discoveries of, well, century in a sense, or at least uh, of the last decade. Now, uh, for now, that's really all we know. Uh, this paper was only published like a week ago from when I'm making this video, and uh, hopefully more research and also more scientists will uh, talk about this in the future. For now, though, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Basically, these uh, three scientists, whose paper you can find in the description below, possibly discovered how we can interpret black holes and they may have also discovered white holes. And they may have also explained a lot of things about black holes that were not explained before. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, do subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and uh, wants to learn about sciences in general through video games and simulations. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe even consider supporting this, this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Space out, I'll see you guys tomorrow and as always, bye bye.